Hey everyone, it's art prof teaching artist Deep D Menon here and I'm joined with Prof Lu on the side. Welcome everybody. Today we are doing a stream on the April Art Dare, which is selfie self-portraits. If you are looking to strengthen and flex your art muscle, Art Prof is the community for you. We have tutorials, critiques, and more, and it's all for free. So Clara, would you like to get us started? Yeah, the Art Dare for April is for you guys to create a self-portrait in any art media based on a selfie photo. It can be a selfie photo that you took three years ago, could be one that you shoot specifically for the art there, that's completely up to you guys. And technically to enter, you just have to create one artwork. We will go over these guidelines again, but you do not have to show the actual photo selfie that you take. You can just show us the self-portrait. But if you wanna show the selfie, that's great too. Totally up to you guys how you wanna do that. So deep, deep, let's dig deep into the history of selfies because that word came along, I don't know, what, 10 years ago? It has not been around for that long. And we tend to associate it with images of celebrities. And by the way, why is Hillary Clinton hanging out with Kim and Kanye? Please explain. I am not entirely sure, but I think that Kim and Kanye are like pretty involved in politics. So maybe that, but Kim is kind of the queen of selfies. She, I think she has a whole book on her selfies. Um, but yeah, selfies kind of became a thing I think when smartphones came out because it became a lot easier for people to just start snapping photos or like you just have this front facing camera. I sometimes will be like checking my makeup on my front facing camera and accidentally take a photo and then there we go, we have a selfie. So um, I think it really became, a, like you said, a celebrity thing, but also just a household thing once smartphones became a household thing. Yeah, so there's this whole culture around selfies now, which keeps growing. We have selfie sticks now, which apparently have become major problems at art museums across the US. So it's not always a good thing. But what a lot of people don't know is I really think about Cindy Sherman as being the first, quote, selfie artist. Tell me in the chat, who here has heard of Cindy Sherman? She's one of those contemporary artists. She's in the art history textbooks. She's not just online. She's everywhere. And I actually think she's really interesting because she does have an Instagram now. And it's so interesting to see somebody who you think about as being in art history on Instagram. So Deep Deep, looking at Cindy Sherman's self-portraits, which we're looking at now, what do you see her exploring through her selfies? Because these are not just about what she looks like. Yeah, I mean, I love the fact that these like are under the umbrella of a selfie because I think a lot of people think that a selfie means you have to be holding the camera like this, but it can it's just really a self portrait that's a photograph. Um, and I love these because these actually are like standalone art pieces at the end. It's not just like an accident you took on the phone, but she's really exploring like identity and character and her personality through all of these photos. I mean, if you showed me all of these, they really are just vastly different people to me when I look at them. Um, each character has so much life and history and story behind it. And even the settings, the angle that it's taken in, um, the composition, all of that stuff is really, really thought about. So this is cool because we talk about taking a selfie and then creating a self-portrait in any medium. And this kind of acts as both. You know, this if she were to submit an art there, at the end of the day, her selfie might actually end up being that self-portrait, which I think is really awesome. So a lot of these images you guys are looking at, they are from a series of images called Untitled Film Stills. And Cindy Sherman shot these in the 1970s and 1980s. And oftentimes what you'll see in these images, she appears as a B-movie actress, a film noir actress. And so a lot of these images, she's really calling attention to stereotypes of women in films, televisions, and magazines. And there's so many of them. So if you guys are interested in her work, look them up because they're really landmark pieces in history. We're getting a few comments asking what the difference between a selfie and just having yourself in a picture. Blue is asking that here. And also Neil is saying, it's weird because I wouldn't normally consider these as selfies. To me, a photo has to have 
a certain angle, lighting, pose, and facial expression to look like a selfie. So what are your thoughts on that, Clara? Because yeah, when I look at these, I also don't immediately think like, oh, that's a selfie, but what's the difference? I think the difference is that selfie really has something to do with the smartphone. There were no smartphones in the 1970s. So obviously Cindy Sherman did not do that. But I think what we're thinking about here is what is the spirit of the selfie and how do we take that as a starting point to create an artwork? That's how we want you guys to think about the photo you shoot of yourselves. The selfie is just raw material that we want you guys to take that image, manipulate it, transform it, change it, distort it, do a lot of different things. So we're not trying to give you guys a very hard definition of what is the selfie. I think there are a lot of things, as Neil was saying, people equate selfies with a very particular angle. Because when you take a selfie on a smartphone, it does tend to do certain types of things. But Deep Deep, how is Cindy Sherman doing selfies now? <laughs> I am. It's amazing. I love this. I've never seen this work before, but it's so hilarious and just like bizarre and alien-esque, but I'm obsessed with these. And it's really like a collage portrait. And I think this work falls in line a little bit more with what we think of as like a selfie. It has that kind of look and feel to it, but there's also a lot of manipulation and comedy and um collage work put into it so i'm a huge fan and i think instagram is actually a really interesting tool too because i feel like with the rise of like pocket cameras and iphones and the selfie being taken also came the rise of like instagram which is an image sharing platform that like in early early instagram i know that selfies were a thing that a lot of people posted on there so it's kind of interesting to see cindy sherman now use Instagram as a platform for her self-portrait work. Seven Angelic says, interesting question. What does count as a selfie? You guys are all like the smartest students in the class who get us to rise to the occasion and get more specific with our prompts. So I'm going to go with what Vishaka says, which is I guess selfie is when you click it yourself. Yeah. So I would say on a smartphone, you take the picture yourself. It should not be of another person. And then run with that. And if you guys want to manipulate it digitally, if you want to actually do a painting from that, it's up to you guys, however you want to do that. Slepnir says, so can we do a selfie without a smartphone? I think you can. I think you can use a webcam camera. I think you can use a DSLR. I think for the purposes of this art dare, I think personally, I really want to focus on you taking that photograph of yourself and that being uh, the intimate like relationship you're having with the camera and not worrying about other people. Because I also think that the photos you take when you're directing yourself are very different than when someone else is taking them for you. You might have a little bit more freedom on what face you're making or how you're dressed or like in this case with Demi Lovato's selfie, it looks like she's like maybe in bed or just lounging on the couch and having like a private moment. So I think that selfies have a different texture and intimacy to them, which is what we want to focus on. So yeah, if you don't have a smartphone, I would say use whatever resources you do have to take a photograph. I could take a selfie right now, like in the webcam, um, you know, but it would again have to be like me taking the photo of myself. Dara says, if you're over a certain age, there are a lot of hard photos and albums of everyday life. If you're in it, would any of those count? I'm not so sure I totally understand the question. Do you want to have your take on it, Deep Deep? I think that Dara is asking, um, they, like when you look through an old photo album, there are photos of like just you in them. I think that it wouldn't count if you didn't take it. This question actually reminds me of like in middle school when I got my first pocket cam or like with um, disposable cameras. I have some really hideous self portraits I take like in my bed, like throwing the deuces up. I think that would count as a selfie. But if it's a photo that your parents took of you or a friend took of you, um, I don't think that would count. Even, you know, if you want to play around with like a self timer, like that could count too. I think we're open to the ideas, but I want it. I think what we want for an art dare for that's like a selfie based self portrait is like you operated the camera and you got that photo and it was kind of this instantaneous moment between you and the camera. 
I mean, I'll tell you, Deep Deep, most of the time, I don't really like to take selfies because they do tend to have a certain look to them, right? I mean, look at this one of Obama and Joe Biden. I mean, the two of them, they're all smushed and their faces are wonky and Obama's nose looks too big. Like, they're, they're not really <laughs> that flattering when you think about it, which is maybe why I don't take them that often. But, but we're gonna look at some examples where people really play with that and push it even further. Yeah, they kind of all have this like slice of life feel, which I also like, they aren't too staged. Cindy Sherman's are a little bit more staged, but again, those are like end product photographs of her, like art practice. These selfies that we're looking at as a launching point for the self portraits that you will make are really like instantaneous kind of slice of life moments. The Obama, Joe Biden one is really interesting because like that's not posed. That's like not like a, they're like in a car having a moment um, and it looks wonky and you can tell that they were like kind of giggling. Like it's, it's really like you're getting a snapshot into like a private moment, which is kind of cool. Although it's funny because some of the selfies are not about private moments. <laughs> They're really about taking the photo to blast that to the entire planet, which I'm suspecting is probably the case if you're one of the Kardashians or Jenners. So another thought that I had looking at all the selfies is the role of foreshortening, because being the anatomy nerd that I am, I think about foreshortening a lot and how oftentimes in art history, especially, it's used as a visual tool to show a sense of drama or narrative. So why do you think foreshortening is just so much fun, Deep Deep? Oh, because it makes everything look so wonky and hilarious and it just makes everything more interesting and bizarre. Cause especially when you're looking at like a self portrait that people do from like a mirror, which I always tell people that they should do. It's a great learning tool. But when you're doing that, there's a certain kind of like pose that you see a lot and like uh, an anatomical proportion kind of that you see because you're using a mirror. But when you're working with the selfie, the camera really is like, you know, elongating your arm or making your head look really smushed. It's like all these fun optics that are happening that you can really play with. So that's another thing that I think would be super fun. And, you know, we could encourage people to do in this is like, see what having this like funny little camera in your hand or close to your face can actually do to create an interesting composition and an interesting figure. It's like, you know, how do we take the selfie from just being like a narcissistic thing that we see celebrities doing on Instagram and turn it into like a cool kind of optical tool and a, and a way of us thinking of it as like a art medium or like a tool for us to play around with our self image or like the camera. I think, I think there's a lot there. Neil is asking, can we see some Professor Lou selfies? You know what? I like never take selfies deep deep. I seriously think I've taken three in my whole life. But if it gets you guys motivated to do this art, dear, I will take some selfies just for you guys because I love you all so much. How about this one with Madonna? <laughs> Obsessed. I love this. Love it. This is a great example of the foreshortening. She looks like an alien. I love how big her eyes are, the like the dra drama of her like cheekbones and then even her hand, like her arm, her fingers, like so good. So, and then also the great thing about selfies is they're kind of like low resolution. So I love how the, or I mean, now they're high res, but I just love the lighting and like just the background. Like it's, it's so indicative of a selfie. It, it's so fun. <laughs> Neil is asking, do we need to draw or paint from the selfie pic or can the pic itself be the final product? Absolutely, yeah. The whole point is that you begin with the photo, but you have to manipulate the photo or you have to paint it or collage it or whatever, however you guys want to actually do that. But yeah, you can't just take the photo. The photo itself is just the beginning. And Blue Wolf is also asking, what about the difference between a selfie in the mirror versus one with the forward facing camera on a phone. That's fine. I mean, we're gonna count both as being the same thing, but they are very different, Deep D. I mean, do you think that the ones with the mirror have a little bit more of a distance just because like the physical proximity is just bigger? I mean, the teacher in me wants to throw that back to the people watching and being like, well, what do you think the difference is? Because I think that's actually really interesting. I mean, what 
are we seeing that's different in a mirror? You're actually seeing the tool that's taking the image when you're shooting a mirror selfie, which is, you know, kind of important that you see that you're also getting a different view. You're seeing what's behind you reflected. So you might see more of the background. You're seeing maybe your outfit. Um, you're also probably not looking right in the lens because you're looking at the phone screen. So your eyes are averted elsewhere, you know, like there's a lot there. So when you're thinking about what selfie you want to take, think about what like the narrative behind using your front facing camera and your back facing camera might do. So it's a lot there, you know, to think about when you're making Another thing, if you look at the one with Madonna, instead of seeing the phone, we see her outstretched arm. So, you know, we get a good shot of her bicep. But what I'm saying is that that is sometimes things that people look for is that outstretched arm, which is positioning the phone so you can actually take the selfie. So there are these little, I guess, clues to how <laughs> the selfie was actually shot that we yeah. do want you guys to start to think about. And this is such a great comment from Dara who says, does the Shroud of Turin count as a Jesus selfie? <laughs> I'm gonna have to marinate on that one, Dara, but I just, I love the way you're thinking about that though, because this concept of a self portrait, it, it's been around forever and ever and ever. It's just that the selfie is one of the more recent versions of it. Ra Nuck is asking, does it have to be in color or can it be monochromatic? It can be anything you want as long as you're starting off with a selfie and translating it and manipulating it. So it could be any media, um, however you want to approach it. But, you know, the starting off point is a selfie that you take. This is a comment from Fab Geek who says, my sinful secret is that I love taking selfies, much to my friend's horror, especially when I travel. Well, I, I'm curious, do people here have a certain guilty pleasure about taking a selfie because it does, I think, equate itself with vanity in a way that say a Rembrandt self-portrait does not. So there is somewhat of a cultural part to taking a selfie. I don't know, do you equate it with narcissism, Deep Deep? Sometimes, but also sometimes I equate it with just, like I remember a year ago I was having really bad acne and I took a selfie every day to keep track of like my acne improvement. And like, I've always kept that folder of like my skin on like hold because I was like, maybe this would be fun to use for a project. You know, it could also just be you kind of just trying to see your face change. I've seen fun videos of people taking a selfie every day and then animating that and you like see how their face changes over a year or over 10 years. So I do think there's a little bit of a narcissistic element in it, but also so is just looking in the mirror and staring at yourself in like a reflection when you are walking the streets and there's a reflection off of a store window and you like look at yourself. And, you know, I don't think there's a harm in enjoying what you look like and wanting to look at yourself and who cares? You can't be mad at people for wanting to appreciate their own beauty or like analyze their face. That's their personal choice. <laughs> So actually, you guys maybe don't know this, but the reason we came up with this art dare was this, quote, accident that Deep Dee ended up creating into this drawing. And this is where the art dare came from. So Deep Dee, why did you take this selfie? And what prompted you to then turn it into a drawing and procreate? So I was... Um searching for something to draw and procreate. And at the moment I was like checking my makeup or if I had something in my teeth or something on my camera. And I accidentally pressed the button on the side that took this photo. Um, and I was like, oh, this is kind of funny. I kind of like the angle that this is in. I like the foreshortening. I like that my teeth are kind of poking out. Um, and I cropped it because I was just like, I really just like my features and the gaze that I have. And so I cropped it and I was like, let me just draw this. And then it ended up turning into the image that we see in the next slide. And I like the challenge of kind of reimagining the rest of my face and distorting the rest of my face based on the information that I gave myself with how I cropped it. So everything else is kind of just like reimagined. And I love the end product. It was so fun to do. It was really funny to make my face look like this. You know, I hadn't done a self portrait like that. And it happened so quickly. And it just was like this accident that turned into this really fun thing that I posted on Instagram. So then I did it again and I did it more deliberately. This time I actually took the photo um, with this process in mind. Here's my smiling little face. And I cropped it again. 
And because I liked that challenge, I kind of liked really focusing on like the features of like my eyes, nose and mouth and a little bit of my eyebrows and uh, using that as like a tool of like the fact that it zoomed in so much. It really emphasizes the, the idea of like the importance of those features and the exaggeration of those features. And then I moved on and did a self portrait based on this one. And I kind of reimagined. And it was fun for this one because I used a mirror to look at some other parts of my face. But again, at the end of the, you know, you can see the emphasis that I originally based it on were my eyes, nose, mouth, and eyebrows. So I will say this was super fun. I already have some more that I want to do. I've been like taking funny little photos and it's a good way of also just not taking yourself too seriously. Like I took that photo actually sitting like right here. Um, and it's like fun, a selfie doesn't have to be pretty. It can be kind of just like you having a funny moment with yourself. And like, I was like cracking up at these photos I was taking <laughs> like, with myself. I was like having a moment, just being like, you're so funny, Dee Dee. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> moment to tap in and just like pat yourself on the back or something, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I also think it's great because I know we sort of, uh, uh, bullied you into using Procreate <laughs> to do the live streams and you hadn't really done a lot of work on Procreate before and I feel like this is the most substantial work you've done on Procreate outside of the live streams actually so this was sort of a nice project to launch your existence in Procreate outside of the live stream. A hundred percent now that you're saying that I think I was also just uh, motivated to use Procreate more. And I was like, what's going to get me to do that? And I was like, okay, explore brushes, explore how I can make things look like traditional media. And an easy thing that's sitting right there is mm, a selfie that I can just use as a launching off point. And we have a question from Neil who says, can I take a feet pick selfie? Yeah, sure. Doesn't have to be your face. I mean, I think for most people, the expectation is the face. So if you want to go be a rebel and blast that part open, we will definitely support you in that initiative because one of the things I get a kick out of Deep Deep when I sign something, there's always some student who is going to just break apart my prompt and make it something totally unexpected. So Neil, you can be that student. I always love having that moment. And I mean, you I guys can see more Sorry, I, I was like, I think it could be interesting if you do your feet, how you give it that selfie feel when you take the photo. I mean, is it like the kind of like camera flash on your foot with like the outstretched, you can kind of like see your arm in it or if it's like a mirror pick, like you can still, I think, make a foot pick look like a selfie, which could be a cool challenge for you. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, I really want to see that now, Neil. <laughs> You're going to have to take up deep tea on that challenge. And of course, I suppose, Deep D, we're going to have to pressure the rest of the staff to inspire you guys with some recent selfies. Like Alex sent me this one, Alex with a taco. And this is the most recent one I did, which was this fluffy. And I posted it on the Art Pro family Instagram. And he was very cooperative. I was, I was very happy about this selfie. <laughs> and Lauren, how does she pull off these outfits, Deep Deep, please explain. Like, nobody can do this the way Lauren can. She's such a cutie, she can pull off anything. But like, this is an awesome selfie. Also imagine the ways that you could manipulate having like a sheep on your head, <laughs> you know, in, the, in this <laughs> final project, like so cool. Or if you got a chick, I mean, that works too. Chicks and guinea pigs also, they really help spice up the image of a selfie, although, Deep D and I were just in stitches when we discovered these selfies that Ricky Gervais took. They're on his Twitter. I can't remember where he shot them, but you guys can look them up. There's a lot of them. We're going to only show you a couple, but I have to tell you, I know he did this as a joke to make fun of selfies and celebrity and narcissism, but I sort of think these are brilliant selfies. What's your take on these? I'm obsessed. These are hilarious. These look like photos that I take and I like text my roommate as a joke, you know, like where she's like, what are you doing? And I like text like a funny selfie to make her laugh or like whatever, or, you know, my parents or something like that. These are so funny. Also like the foreshortening in this, amazing. The facial expression, amazing. Like Ricky really has what I think is an amazing selfie nailed down. <laughs> I mean, to me, Deep Deep, he's totally channeling Andrea Mantegna's Dead Christ. 
the whole <laughs> foreshortened body, sure. the face in the distance. I mean, Ricky Gervais, I had no idea you had this in you. And you know what's fun about this? You can tell he's going all out. He's not trying to curate these or get the good one. He's just putting them all out there. And I think that's such a great way to develop a series of images. I love that he's wet in all of these too. It adds such a funny <laughs> element and like the hair or the like the ones where he's like half submerged, it like adds another level of like weird foreshortening and like optics. It's like so fun. <laughs> I mean, in some of these, he looks like a mythical beast and the way that he shows off the teeth and he like compresses the skin and makes his eyes pop. I mean, they're so funny. They're almost like those funhouse mirror reflections that you see if you go to a carnival or something like that. But I was just really inspired by these. And honestly, this would be a great way to start is just to shoot like 50 selfies, just yeah. really, really quick fast, dirty ones. Do you think that might help people get started? Absolutely. I mean, I think that'll also help you remove yourself from needing to think of it as like a perfect image or like get something really like specific. I think just taking like 50 and just being like, nobody's ever going to see these. Let's just like have fun, like run around, like spin in a circle and just take 50 and allow it to be blurry, like whatever. Um, see what happens because like the selfie is a really cool starting off point that you can really manipulate. And I think the fact that he's in water is so cool. Like I wonder what our audience could use as like an element in their selfie to um, add in another layer of like silliness or like just something <laughs> different. All right, so we do have an Art Dare leash for those of you guys who wanna get ambitious this month. And remember, to submit to the Art Dare, technically, all you need to submit is one artwork, okay? I know some of you guys are super ambitious and some of you will do three, some of you will do five, but I know some people oftentimes are looking for that little nudge, that extra push to do something outside of your comfort zone. And so the Art Dare Leap is for you to create a series of 16 artworks you have to use the same size and art media for each artwork. So actually at the end of the month, if you decide to do the Art Dare Leap, you're gonna end up with a series. And you guys have heard us talk about creating a series of artworks. What are some of the challenges of that? And I reviewed somebody's portfolio this week and I said, listen, your stuff is so good. You don't need to play around anymore. You are so ready to do a series right now. And so maybe, that's where one of you guys are at. You need that push to say, hey, let's do it. Let's make 16 of these self-portraits. Let's do it in a month. And let's see what we have at the end of the month. I mean, don't you think that, I feel like you should do that, DD. <laughs> you should do the leap. <laughs> Maybe I will, who knows? <laughs> I think it's great. I mean, I think also this is nice because it doesn't require like too much too many materials, the media is completely open. <laughs> Most people have access to a smartphone or a webcam or something. So taking 16 selfies is something you can do in literally 16 seconds. And then you have your 16 photos and, you know, go for it. So Blue Wolf is saying 16, says someone who did the October art there. Now that was a marathon. That was like going to the Olympics. So this is not the Olympics. This is sort of like the qualifications. But the thing that I think you guys will find is that as Deepti said, you can get the reference photos so fast. And second of all, not having to decide what the size is, what media you're going to use, that's pre determined because you have to pick one size and one art media that will actually make it go a lot faster because that decision has already been made so the quantity may sound like a lot but it actually is less work because there's less decision making that has to occur as you're creating the process so keep it in mind of course it is definitely not required but it's something you guys can strive for which i think would be really fun okay Deepti, let's tell people where to get all the information on the Art Dare, because obviously you guys will need to reference some of that. So you'll want to go to artprof.org, click on Teaching and Learning. There's a section in that menu called Art Dares. So if you click on that, it will take you to this page. And if you guys want to get a notification once a month, 
when the new art dare is announced, I highly recommend that you join the email list because you'll get the email the second that it's announced. And that way you guys can stay on top of it. But you wanna click on Deepy's face on the far right hand side. And that will take you to this page, which has all the information. And if you guys scroll down on the page, you will see that this Google slideshow is available. We have the link and it's also here on the Art Dare page. We also have an upload form because we know some people don't have Instagram, in which case you can just submit your entry on the website. Although we do really, really prefer that people submit on Instagram. It's faster, it's easier for other people to see the other entries. So we'd really encourage you guys to do that. And also we love sharing them in our Instagram stories as well. So DT, what do you think is fun about seeing the other entries for the Art Dare? I mean, you're part of this community every month if you're participating in the Art Dare, of like other people who are doing the same thing all around the globe. And it's kind of a fun way of sharing your work, but also seeing what other people are doing and how other people are approaching the same topic. You were all given the same topic, but we can guarantee that no two things are going to look the same. So it's a really exciting way to just come together and applaud everyone's work, but also see how all of our brains work differently and how everyone can take something that seems pretty like simple or straightforward and really blow it up in a way that's super original to them, which I think is so fun. I love looking at the art there as we share them all on our um, on our page. We say, share so many and it's just so fun to see like what our community is creating. Neil says, any tips for fickle artists like me who can't stick to their guns to get this job done? I'm going to say, read this comment from Bean, who says, Neil, I try to set an extremely pathetic goal for myself, like five minutes a day of drawing or whatever. But you know what, you guys? It works. Like, Deep D, how many times have you sat down and said, I'll just do five minutes? Like, did that you first... always stop at five? <laughs> That first selfie caricature I actually did was supposed to be like five, 10 minutes, I think maybe 30. I ended up spending like two and a half hours on it. Like it was like, once you get going, it's so fun. You just get excited or it'll at least start the juices flowing. So I think, yeah, setting a setting the bar low and allowing yourself to just dip your toes into it. I think you'll find that you'll spend a little bit more time. Also, Neil, you can set like a stretch goal. So you can say, okay, my bare minimum is I'm going to do one. And then if you get that one done, maybe your next goal is, okay, I'm going to try to do three. Because I think the thing about goals, you have to make them feel small and bite-sized. Like you can't stick a whole pound of steak into your mouth. Like that's not going to happen. You're not going to enjoy it. And it's not going to be very practical. So you have to think about your art dare in the same way. Cut it up into little manageable pieces and then just see how far you get. And there's no pressure. You know, it's totally up to you guys. Now, another option that we'd love for you guys to take advantage of, because we've seen people just do so well with this, is to join the Art Prop Discord and hang out in the Art Dares channel. DT, can you tell people what goes on in that channel? So the Art Dares channel is awesome because people will post works in progress of their Art Dares, multiple iterations of their Art Dares, and people will give like not really critique, but just a lot of encouragement and positive feedback on them. So it's a fun way of like on the Instagram, a lot of times you'll see the final product, but on the Art Dare hashtag on the Discord, you'll see like the process. And this is a place where you could even like you could post the selfie that you take if you want and like get opinions from people or it's like a fun way of being like um, a part of the art dare community in a more like work in progress kind of way. So I think that's really exciting because it's a fun way of like not having to just focus on the end product, but to have the process be a cool community oriented thing as well. The other thing is if you're in the Discord, most of the channels, there is a pinned message where we have all the information. So if you're like doing the art dare and you're like, oh, I can't remember what's the hashtag, you just go to the pinned messages and all the information is there. So it's really great to do that. But also I think people participate in the Discord differently than they do on Instagram. Like on Instagram, I think people really are like done. Like I, I finished this, I'm putting it out there. But a lot of people will say, hey, I'm thinking about this not sure if that's a good idea. What do you guys think? And so it's a place to just mess around and make crappy work and show bad sketches and 
nobody's going to judge you because we're all there to learn. It's like an ongoing classroom that goes on for the entire art there. And of course, next month, we will definitely have a video with all of the featured entries. And we will also announce an honorable mention and a prize winner. We have so many cool prizes. We have Cat's Comics Journal, my book. We have access to the Discord voice channel. You guys have to check out Cat's book. Have you read this, Steve D? I wasn't sure if you had a copy. No, I've seen pages of it, but I I need to win so I can I can get one. <laughs> I I think you better work on that because it's freaking awesome. Like I've read it three times. It's so good. Also, we have other prizes. Like if you're the winner, you can get a free portfolio critique, an Instagram critique. We'll give you five months access to the Discord voice channels, all kinds of really cool things that you guys can win. Art Prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify. Spotify, and also on iTunes. And speaking of Discord, Deep D and I will be hanging out there in a few minutes. We will be in the post live streams channel. The invite link is in the video description below. Subscribe to our channel so you can continue to grow and develop as an artist. And a big thank you to our top Patreon supporters. You guys make it possible for us to keep Art Prof up and running. And Deep D, see that third column? Oh, yeah. So exciting. I'm so happy. We're going to hope that that fourth column gets started soon. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.